ever hear voices in your head? I do. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most honored guests. One aspect of Toastmasters that I love is the objective evaluation because I find it impossible to give myself a fair self-evaluation. As I was thinking about why, I realized it's because I have two conflicting voices in my head. The first one that I've named for no particular reason is Aunt Ethel. Aunt Ethel is a retired auditor who is extremely negative and grumpy. She likes to sit on her back porch in an oversized spring back chair with a large bowl of popcorn. And her favorite pastime is to criticize me. One time I gave a speech and I went seven seconds over. This really bothered me. All of a sudden, I could hear a gleeful Aunt Ethel say, seven seconds over, seven seconds over, seven seconds. You could probably imagine how annoying this would be. I knew Aunt Ethel was getting to me when I wanted to repeat her criticism to other people. After that speech, I told a fellow Toastmaster that I went seven seconds over. And his response was, okay. And then he looked at me like, why are you telling me this? I couldn't say because Aunt Ethel was driving me crazy, even though Aunt Ethel was driving me crazy. The thing about Aunt Ethel's criticism is why it's correct. It isn't helpful because she never offers suggestions for improvement. Her only goal is to amplify my mistakes, which makes me feel bad and is not productive. The way I distance myself from Aunt Ethel is to imagine pulling her chair way back and launching her into a somersault motion with popcorn flying and her landing in a giant haystack about 50 feet away. And the popcorn bowl just happens to land overturned on her head. Don't worry though, no imaginary people were harmed in the making of this speech. The haystack is both pitchfork and needle free. The point is, Aunt Ethel is making hay far away from me. Now, if you have your own Aunt Ethel bothering you, give this mental exercise a try. And if you want to substitute a muddy pig sty or a stinky field of manure, that's up to you. Either way, I guarantee you'll feel better. The other voice in my head I have named Uncle Ned. Uncle Ned is a lovable retired football coach who will always tell me how perfect I am, even when I completely mess up. If I were to stop in the middle of a speech with a blank and panic look on my face, he would tell me that dramatic pause made the speech even more exciting. He'll say things like, great job, Way to go, best speech I've ever heard. Everything with Uncle Ned is perfect and nothing is ever wrong. He will always tell me how smart and talented I am, but he'll never tell me how to improve. Of course, I love Uncle Ned, who wouldn't? But I realize he isn't helping me grow. The way I distance myself from him is usually with a distraction. Maybe I'll send him over to a nearby barbecue. I might even suggest that he get a ladder to help Aunt Ethel down eventually. With these two competing voices in my head, I find I'm not as bad or good as I think I am because both Aunt Ethel and Uncle Ned distort my view. There have been times I have given a speech and I thought I was shaking so much that the audience must think I'm a nervous wreck. And then I'll read an evaluation about how calm I seemed. Calm? How could that be? Oh yes, that's Aunt Ethel's fault. Or I think I did something really well and no one will mention it. That's because good old Uncle Ned is pumping me up. 
Now when I read an evaluation after a speech, I look for repeated praises and suggestions for improvement. Because I know when several people notice the same points, that is the truth. They might all say how they like a particular phrase or how a certain gesture would make my speech stronger. I believe a good evaluation has to be both honest and kind. When I give an evaluation for a speech, I would never want to discourage the speaker from giving another speech because it takes a lot of courage to give a speech, even virtually, and many are hesitant to try. I think it's better to have a more balanced approach, perhaps a kinder version of Aunt Ethel and a more realistic version of Uncle Ned. Or Neffel, if you will, Mr. Toastmaster. 